Hey everybody, welcome back to Kirby Triple Deluxe. Last time we completed Old Odyssey, the third level. Today we're just gonna jump right into Wild World, which has a little bit of everything you could expect from this game. It's got like a grass level, actually it's a haunted circus level, although it's more like a haunted mansion. And it's got a lot of gimmicks. I guess that's why it's called Wild World. Kind of makes sense in that sense. Kind of got a little bit of everything. It's pretty wild. But I like this level. It's kind of takes a lot of these enemies, like those Pactos there, and makes them, um... Prettier, I guess, more flower flowery like. There's a keychain down here. I like it a lot. Also, I just like these uh, big waddies. They're adorable, like bear waddies. Love them. I just, everything in Kirby's is so adorable. I don't want to kill it, but Kirby makes me kill them. Everything has to die. Anyway, for this level, you definitely want something that can cut grass, because not you. You're useless. Uh, there's gonna. Sorry for going useless, you actually hit me. Um, there's gonna be a lot of grass you need to cut, simply put. So, Spear, uh, Leaf can actually cut grass as well. There's a Leaf earlier. Uh, I probably should've grabbed because I like Leaf more than Spear, but hey. Whatever. Spear can actually be pretty effective taking down bosses with this down attack in the air. Uh, because it does, uh, well, if you're not flying like that, Beetle, Hornhead, that's your name. Your name's right down there. Uh, this attack can hit a lot of, uh, well, it can hit a lot very quickly, basically. That's my point. Anyway, we also needed to uh, reveal that door because for some reason you can't actually unlock the door unless it's revealed like that. You need it visible. I mean, usually you can see the door past the grass, so I don't know exactly why, but whatever. Anyway, we've got a section here. We need to cut this uh, to reveal a switch to open up some platforms up here and reveal another weight, which we can just fuck up. Great. Fantastic! Good job, me! Okay, well, let's try that again, shall we? Yeah, your wings as beetle can actually clip these ropes. It, I forgot about that. But it can do that, and I made a mistake of doing it too early. But that's our first sunstone. And I dropped my body by accident. I was trying to jump. Hit the let go button. I also love the music. It's very frantic and energetic. Again, fits Kirby very well. A lot of Triple Lux's soundtrack just fits Kirby very well. And we got this little section here with a bunch of bomb rocks. Uh, and by a bunch, I mean like two. <laughs> two that one hides a keychain. That, that's all I meant by a bunch. Okay. I was trying to avoid the cover there, but it didn't go so well. Hey, it happens. Oh, wait, right, you. You're a bit of annoying. You're a bit of an annoying TD. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, he's gonna run away from you if you get too close to him, so you either have to, like, charge in like that, or use a projectile to deal with him. Uh, either one works. Beetle is fine. Pretty much any ability you have, you can get in this level would be fine to deal with him. You can get beam earlier as well, and your, like, jump dash attack is super helpful. So, we can destroy this bomb rock to, um, kill all those wildlies, or we can let them live. Because that platform, you can actually go through it. There's a platform there, uh, like, right about... Here, like in between the third and fourth waddly here, that well, well, set, not kind of the one that isn't sleeping. Either way, this is still, still the third and fourth. This is a soft spot where you just drop through it, and you don't have to kill them at all. You can just let them live, and I'm going to because they're nice and cute, and I don't want to kill them. This is a pacifist run as much as possible. Not that I can be much of a pacifist because these waddlies have to die. Those ones specifically are guarding a door, and they. They must be punished. Why am I? I guess I like Beetle, but I, th I probably like Archer more. <laughs> so I don't know why I'm killing all these creatures that I want to get their powers from, but oh well. Gotta watch out for these guys. They're hidden in pretty, um... What's what I'm saying? I also have to sneeze, so I don't want to talk anymore. Um, <laughs> they're hidden behind, like, walls and stuff, so it's kind of difficult to see when they're coming up. Just be attentive, and you shouldn't have much of a problem, but, yeah. Anyway, this, wow, okay, that worked out far better than I expected. Up here is there are rare keychains behind a Pacto uh, that's in the ceiling like that, so just pay attention for that, I guess. And, uh, we got Bird. I've used Bird exactly once. I don't know if I want to use it again. Fuck it. Let's do it. 
you can um, go into the pause screen and check all the abilities that a specific power has. Um, but I am... Oh, can actually... Oh, Bird can get these too. I didn't know that. Cool, I mean, it makes sense. I would th I would have thought that uh, that can cut the, the grass. But that's cool. I still don't really like Bird. <laughs> but um, it's cool that it can cut grass like that. Uh, like I was saying, though, you can go into the pause screen at any point and see what abilities um, a power has. You can check all the button combos you need to know, all that. But uh, I tend not to be able to memorize it, especially for Bird for some reason. I don't know why. Bird, again, it's just that one power that's always escaped my understanding. Yeah, it's a one, though. Not a seven. It's a one. <laughs> Bird Kirby is really adorable, though. Then again, that goes without saying when it's Kirby. Just everything's adorable. <laughs> it's Ball Kirby is adorable as well. In, um, in Rainbow Curse, which was like the sequel to, to Canvas Curse, what was the reason for Kirby turning into a ball? I seem to remember there wasn't a reason from the few things I've watched of Rainbow Curse. Like, he just sort of rolled down a hill or something and decided, well, I guess this is how I'll go through the game now. <laughs> Instead of jumping. I never played Rainbow Curse. I never played Canvas Curse, for the, for that matter, but, uh... I don't know. Rainbow Curse just never really caught my attention, I guess. Though the art style, though, was beautiful. The only, the only problem is that you had to look down at the Wii U gamepad to play the game because you had to use a stylus to move Kirby around. And the Wii U gamepad didn't have the best screen. Well, I guess for like a 480p display, it was fine. But again, it was only a 480p display on an HD console. So a game where you primarily have to look down at the gamepad, not the best. It's great for games like Shovel Knight and um, well, retro games, I guess, and uh, the Virtual Console. Because, you know, overall that resolution isn't a huge deal, but, um, yeah. Wait, you can, you, you can use Bell in the water? I didn't know that. That's awesome. That makes Bell even better. I already loved Bell, but damn. I mean, I, I don't know how much you can do with it, but you can just sort of spin around, I guess. But that's really awesome. Uh, what was I talking about? Right, right Wii U gamepad. Uh, yeah, though, I definitely could see that game on the Switch. Port it over, because, um... On the Switch's touchscreen, it could look beautiful, and I guess if you don't use the touchscreen, you could, or if you're playing on uh, the TV, you could just, uh, you could just use pointer controls, I guess? I mean, the Switch's pointer controls, from what I understand, aren't great, because it has to use a gyro and has some, um, what is it called? Gyroscopic drift, I think? Where, like, it just sort of drifts away and you have to keep realigning it. And for a whole game, that would probably be pretty problematic. Because the Switch doesn't have a, a sensor bar. And the, the Joy-Cons don't have, like, an IR. Well, the right Joy-Con does, but the, the, the it's on the bottom of the controller, so it's not even that good for uh, for pointing. Unless you have to turn it around or something. I don't know. The Switch is weird in that sense, but... Yeah, I don't know. Uh... Though, Epic Yarn did have something like that, like, just in the, the concept of, like, pointer controls to move Kirby around. Epic Yarn had something like that. Uh, the train transformation. You, uh, you, uh, you use the pointer controls to make trails. Basically, it was Canvas Curse on Louie, from what I understand. So, they could do it. They just have to figure out how to, like, make the switches gyro pointing really usable because like world of goo i think uh was ported over from was it the wii or the wii u one of the two probably the wii um i think it was actually the wii definitely whatever one of the two and um it used the switches pointer controls instead of the wii's obviously the wii modes and it <laughs> didn't work that great you can also use the touchscreen for that game, from what I understand, and, um, that worked great. But, yeah. Or maybe, um, maybe if they ever ported Rainbow Curse, which I can almost guarantee you they won't. But if they ever did, oh, wait. Come on, Kirby, go! Get it! Yes! Okay. Yeah, because we kind of need to get to that one. I, I, there's one we need to skip later, that is not the one we need to skip. Um, 
They can make it a, a game you can only play on the touchscreen. I think there's already one of those games, and I think they were, were confirmed to be more coming. Maybe not, but I know there's already one. It's just some sort of rhythm game, but I don't know. I guess I don't want to limit the already probably limited user base that might buy Rainbow Curse, but I don't know. It's just weird to make a sequel to Canvas Curse anyway, frankly. Anyway, need to skip the end door there because there's a little hole in the wall that uh, we need to get into. And I love this section. It's actually really fun. We need to, we're going to be shot up here. We need to avoid all these 3D warp stars and actually get the rare keychain would be preferable. That'd be very nice. Kirby, though. Uh, I think he, I think Kirby might have more spin-off games than he does main series games. Or at least it's really close because, like, there's... I think a couple different pinball games. I know there's one on the Game Boy. Maybe there is only that one. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the only pinball game. But there's like a golf game on the the SNES. There's uh, Kirby's Avalanche, Kirby Tilt and Tumble, uh, Air Ride. I guess would be a, a spinoff. That's a fantastic one, though. Seriously. Um, and what else is there? There's more. I guess there's like the spin-off games that have come from Triple Deluxe and Robobot as well. I don't know, Kirby can kind of just be shoved in anything, and it just works really well. Because it's Kirby. Though, seriously though, Air Eye's fantastic. Well, maybe not the racing part so much. I would love for like, just a quick game thrown on the Switch. That is just City Trial. Just multiplayer online. City Trial, I can play with four players, you can use one Joy-Con, I mean, you only need, like, one analog stick and a button to play that game. It would work so well on the Switch! I seriously want to see that. It'd be amazing. I mean, Kirby games seem to come out, like, every five minutes now. So, speaking of things that come out every five minutes... Uh, Monster Hunter. <laughs> I have not played the games personally, but I swear I hear about a new Monster Hunter game, like, every month. And it's like, why? I mean, it's popular. That's awesome. I'm glad the, the Monster Hunter fans get them. I'm glad I get a Kirby game like every year now for some reason. But aren't Monster Hunter games supposed to be like long, big adventures that you like grind in for a long time or something? I don't know. I mean, I've not played them. I played the demo for one of them, but I think Monster Hunter 4. But otherwise, I've, I have no experience with Monster Hunter, so I could be completely misinterpreting what Monster Hunter even is. But it just seems odd to be the series that comes out like every year. I don't know. Just me. This is coming from someone who hasn't played the games, of course. So obviously I'm experienced and uh, qualified to, to talk about them and judge them. But seriously, good, like, good, good thing for Monster Hunter fans, I guess. It's also like Yokai Watch. I know that series has been out in Japan for a while, but like, it doesn't help that America got them late, and then we ended up just releasing like every single one within the span of a couple of years. I again haven't played Yokai Watch as far. I played the demo, and I, I couldn't really get into it. Honestly, it wasn't bad. It just I don't know. Couldn't. It didn't interest me much. Anyway, we need to dissolve that. Um, what is that thing called? Even I don't even remember. A thing. A d disguise? Might just be a disguise. I don't know. Anyway, need to dissolve it to reveal the optional door. And then we need to use this cannon to get to the switch ultimately. There's a lot of enemies in Triple Lux actually that just got like slight alterations. There's Gordos and now there's Ghost Gordos. Ooh. These not these. These are Fubo Rovers, but there's like just Ghost Gordos that exist and they're great. Anyway, keychain there and a uh, disguise floor <laughs> below a door, above a door. No. God, I love this song so much. Oh, that's upsetting. Anyway. And here you want to watch out on this floor, because in the background there's going to be one panel without spikes, and I just walked on the spikes, and that panel's going to have a yellow stripe on it. Just walk up to enter a secret room with, well, one, a one-up. And in this chest, the rare keychain. That one took me a long time to find. Um, I didn't find every single rare keychain 
On my own, I did use a guide. See, these are the ghost gordos. But I found a lot of them because I just wanted to play this game a ton. And that one, I think that one was the last one I found on my own. Um, and then I started using a guide because I just didn't have time, I guess, to, to find the rest of them. Though, me saying I don't have time, I've spent way, I spent way too much time like trying to 100% Xenoblade Chronicles X. So, I could make time very easily for more things, but... Like, how do you expect me to do that when I have to play that game constantly? Uh, let's see, we need to find an optional door, or like a locked door rather, because we can also go into just, just that door, but why would we when we can open this one? And I actually don't know what happens if you just go through that door. Because, as far as I know, this leads to a hypernova section, so I don't know if you just don't go through that door, you just don't go to a hypernova section? Huh, I'm actually gonna try and figure that out. Not try, I'm gonna figure that out, because I'm actually really interested now. And I kinda wanna show off what it is, honestly. Anyway, to be honest, this is probably my least favorite hypernova section, because there's pretty much no puzzle solving, it's just you suck up these, um... These, like, these Furu Rovers, these Great Furu Rovers, whatever they're called, ghosts. And that's it. <laughs> like, you just hold B and you win. There's really nothing to it. And, like, it's fun for a little bit to, to suck up all these ghosts, but one, it's like the same animation every time. And two, it's just, you're not doing anything. The hypernova sections where you solve puzzles are great, but it's not every hypernova section you do that. And that's my problem with hypernova. Like, ooh, now we're sucking up books. I, I don't mean to be so critical, but it's just... I wish they would have done more with it. And I guess I guess it's just coming from... Because I really liked Hype Nova when it first came out. When this game first came out. I was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. It's so much better than um, than the Super Abilities. But now, I guess with uh, the Robobot armor from Robobot in mind, it's just like, eh. It's alright. <laughs> it's, it, it's been... Um, Worsened by comparison, I guess. It, it don't get me wrong. It's fun. The music's great again, but eh, could be better. Anyway, all these are fake. So what we need to do is go into the background and pull open this drape. That's a curtain, not a drape. I guess it could also be a drape. I don't know. And that burns all the fake ones, so we can find the real door. But there's of course a sunstone back there. We also need to just open the window or eat the window. <laughs> Okay, I kind of forgot about that. That's amazing. You just eat the window to get the sunstone. <laughs> it does have a lot of charm like that sometimes. But ultimately, I do find it kind of bland. But, eh, it's alright. I do like how when you get hyped over, all the color literally bursts off of Kirby, you know? He takes the door, but not us somehow? I don't know. How did Kirby not understand what happened there? Like, he was behind the the, the curtain, I guess? I don't know. Um, you think he would have saw the door disappear? Anyway, all we need to do here is kind of just wait here for this thing to sort of pop out of the, the thing he's possessing. And um, then we can suck him up. Anyway. A few little details in the background here. We, of course, have a picture of Magalore back there. We have a picture of Terranza. And we have a picture of uh, Cookie Country, the first level from Return to Dreamland. So, just some Easter eggs. I wonder if Magalore owns this mansion. It'd be weird, because Magalore isn't from Dreamland. <laughs> he's from another... No, he's from Harkondra, right? Yeah. Or is he? Was it ever confirmed where he was from? Or was it just, like... He, like... I don't want to spoil Return to Dreamland's amazing story. Not that a really bad, amazing story, but it, it had a decent one. Magal was a pretty cool character, honestly. Maybe Terranza owns it. That's that's more likely, considering this is part of Floralia. Terranza could own it. I like how this piano grows teeth. It reminds me a lot of Mario 64. But finally, we get stuck up this great fool rover, and somehow. Oh, <laughs> that falls. I can't. I forgot about that. That's awesome. And uh, that brings the door back to us. Oh. That's not an actual room, then. It's not an actual path. So you have to do the hypno section in this level. Because that's a fake door. Good to know. That 
level's pretty fun. It's just, the, again, the hype and section. It doesn't last too long, at least. I will say that. Like, it's pretty much just that, like, a few rooms. But for those few rooms, eh. Like, thankfully, the times where they do make it just a purely visual spectacle, um, Hypernova doesn't last very long. Which is better than Return to Dreamland, I think, uh, from what I remember, at least. Where some of the super uh, power sections, they went on for a little bit too long. We're getting all these keychains of the animal bodies. I kind of want to see them return. Um, they're kind of a forgotten relic of the Kirby series. They haven't appeared since Dreamland 3 in, like, a, a playable sense. I'd kind of like to see them return, even if only for, like, a world. Like, just have that world's gimmick be, like, each level has a different animal body or something. Though, uh, they mainly existed, I think, in the older games, because, um, there weren't a ton of powers, and the animal bodies allowed you to modify those powers in a, a unique way, like, um... I can't remember if it was with Bird or with Spark or what in Dreamland 3, but if you used, um... Was it Koo? It was a bird. I don't know if it was Koo. I can't remember their names. I love them so much, but I can't remember their names. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um... You could turn into, like, an RV bird, and it was awesome. Like, you controlled them. It's really fun. Uh, but I guess, you know, after Kirby 64 as well, they introduced a lot more powers, because Kirby 64 had the copy abilities to give you even more powers. Um, but after that, with, uh, well, the next, like, mainline Kirby game was, what, Amazing Mirror? No, well, Nightmare and Dreamland, technically, but... Yeah, they started introducing more powers. The next new game was Amazing Mirror, and... I guess they just didn't need animal bodies anymore to, like, modify your powers to give them new effects. So... I guess that's why they kind of went on the wayside, but I don't know, I think it'd be fun for, like, one world. Maybe I just want to see a remake of, like, the Dreamland games in a collection, like... With this sort of graphic style, remake Dreamland 1, 2, and 3. I mean, they have models for the animal bodies, because they appear in some of the side modes. Also, we're in a pyramid, I should probably mention that, and I love this song, it's so good! I usually hate desert levels in games, but Triple X has such good ones! It's, I guess it helps that it's not like a desert world, it's just a desert level or two that you go through. That really helps it, you know, stand out as well, and just be fun. I like how it's a pyramid, I like how you have those cobras in the background that'll fire on you, it's just... It's really fun. I can't get it. I love this level. It's probably one of my favorite levels in the game, honestly. That's why I haven't talked about it much until now. <laughs> anyway, uh, we could bake all those chests in the background or those blocks or whatever we had to do. Uh, to get stars and food and a sunstone, of course, and a chest. And that's about that for that section, I guess. Nothing more to say there. Have we seen the... Uh, yeah, we saw the Cobas that fired on us. I didn't spoil that. Let's see. Uh, we haven't really shown off Needle much. I kind of want to. I don't remember what the section... Oh, right, okay, so we have to be uh, beat this mini-boss here before uh, that gets to the end of this path because it'll be... Oh, it'll uh, fall in a pit if we don't. Luckily, Needle's all right. Yeah, we can uh, do this little attack there to get a ton of, um, well, not a ton of damage, but quick little hit in from above. And now we just have to rush in. And we have plenty of time. We can grab these stars. And we're going to sit here. No! Nope. <laughs> and grab the sunstone. Until I like that little jingle. Pretty nice. Double Lux has, like, just the best sound effects. Though I think it probably uses a lot of similar ones from, uh, the same ones rather from Return to Dreamland, but whatever. Hey, sound effects. Sound design in games is, like, so, super important to me. Um, that spider had to die. Yeah, it, it, things have to, like, sound good. Not just sound, uh, not just sound uh, music, but, like, that the sound you get from punching someone in a game has to be satisfying, and that's, like, Kirby does that really well, like, this rock, when I punch someone with my rock fist, it sounds like I am actually punching someone with a rock fist, and it feels satisfying. Anyway, need to break through those, um, not break through, but wait on these collapsing blocks in order to get a sunstone. 
Rock's helpful there because you can just wait on them, but also you can't move, so actually getting up is a bit more difficult than I thought it would be, but hey. Whatever. And then just pull the switch to get to this end door. That's a pretty short level, but it's a really fun one. Really short and sweet. Those are the best Kirby levels, Kirby levels in my opinion. Also, did I get the rare keychain? I don't even remember. Oh, no, I didn't. Ah, poop. Ah, poopy-doo. <laughs> well, I guess we'll go get it. Alright, so yeah, in this room, we simply need to go up here, past the Waddle Dee, and there it is in a box. That's literally it. It's really easy to get, but I guess easy to miss as well. Gator. Rick and... Uh, yeah, more ammo buddies, come on! And now with that mistake remedied, the rare keychain is... <laughs> I, I, I'm glad I went back for that one. That's a really good one, I love it. And then it's a clean choo-choo. Alright, and now with that mistake remedied, we can finally go to level 5. Or stage 5, rather. And... Oh, this is another pyramid level. I was gonna say, I don't even remember what this level is. But it's just a pyramid. Awesome. I want Cutter. Give me that. <laughs> nice chest, just one star. Really, really worth opening it. That's probably just like, mummy traps. Ooh. I don't know what a mummy trap really is. It's a trap placed by, by a mummy, I guess. Even though they're dead and shouldn't be able to place traps. Look, I don't know. I'm not going to try and justify my words. I'm just going to admit they make no sense. Uh, spear? Nah. I want cutter. I want to keep that. One of these tests has to have something important. Uh, kinda. One of them kind of did. Also, that cobble had a pineapple. So that was totally worth killing him for. The pyramid holds the pineapples, hides them. Man, that's some good commentary. Oh god, no! Oh. <laughs> that was... Uh, sorry. That was really close. Uh, okay, Jesus. We have to go into the background here. Kill you, because you're going to weigh down these platforms. Yeah, this level is a bunch of these scales. Um, kind of like Mario 1 had these scales as well. That's a weird comparison to draw, but it did. Mario 1 did have scales. Also, like every other 2D Mario game, I think, did. Maybe Mario 2 didn't to USA, but like... Did World? Did World have scales? I, can't, I haven't played World in a very long time. Even though I, I love that game to death, but I just haven't played it in a while. I don't remember it having scales. Well, all the new games have scales, because, well, well maybe New DS, because I haven't played New DS in a long time. But, like, they're all so similar, and I hate to, like, pound that point into the ground, but it's true. Uh, I, Kirby's such a, it's, like, refreshing, because it's very different from Mario, and it, uh, right now, I'm just kind of sick of Mario games. <laughs> um... 2D especially, which is why I'm so glad Mario Odyssey is coming out, because... Oh my god, that game looks fantastic. Um, I love the... I, I just love that it's a 3D Mario game we can actually, like, explore. Because I love the Galaxy games, but... Uh, those levels were kind of the start of them just making linear, uh... Linear, like, 2D-like levels, I guess, in a sense. I mean, there are still very much 3D levels. There, it was great, but it really it, it started to sow the seeds, I guess, for um, 3D Land and World, which are good games. Don't get me wrong, but I prefer personally um, how Mario 64 and Sunshine played. Uh, not so much I prefer those games, but I prefer like the concept of that world, like. I, I prefer the idea of Isle Delfino and all the levels associated with it than the Common Observatory and all the domes. I do like Sunshine more than... Uh, sorry, I like um, Galaxy more than Sunshine, 
But I like uh, the idea of, of Sunshine more, if that makes any sense. I like the concepts it introduced and, and how it improved upon some of the ones uh, 64 had. Like, Aldo Fino is a, a massive improvement over Peach's Castle. Just in how interconnected that world feels. Whereas Peach's Castle was very much like separate uh, worlds. Also, I never noticed this like I never noticed this like tree over here. It's really it kind of looks like wispy. Maybe it's not supposed to be a tree at all, but it's supposed to be some weird um, structure. But it kind of looks like a tree to me. Maybe I'm an idiot. That's very possible. If you ever gotten that for me, I don't know. You know maybe maybe I haven't shown that enough. I don't know. I was gonna say maybe you're not a good enough judge of character, but that's that's making an assumption. I shouldn't be doing that. Uh, okay, so we need to lower this platform. <laughs> that didn't, it didn't really do anything, did it? Oh, well, balls. What we need to do, actually, is go back here, raise that platform, and now go into the background, and now we can use this key to unlock that door because we have access to the door. <laughs> Stuff's going by pretty quick. Usually when there's four sunstones in a level, it means a uh, hypernova section. Because they usually just, like, like to shove uh, two sunstones there, but no, this one has four, and it's actually like four different uh, unique ways to get it. Actually, by unique ways, I mean I think every single one right now has used a key, but hey, unique in a sense. So I think the uh, red keychain is coming up in one of these chests. All we have to do is use the 3D helmet cannon here to destroy these blocks, and one of these chests should have. The, uh, the rare keychain eventually. I don't think it's the, it might be these. I don't remember where it is. This one is probably one of the easiest ones to find because, um, like it's a mandatory section and they give you the helmet. It's not really hidden away at all. I do quite like these sections though, with all the enemies attacking you from the background and, uh, you being able to now, like, kind of fight back against them. It's kind of cool. But one of these chests should have, yeah, there it is. And, oh, it also has the four sunstone. I completely forgot about that, but... Good, I guess. I, mean, I just... I love desert songs in games, but desert levels usually just suck. And I hate that because their music is so good. I want them to be fun. Like, oh, I'm the keychain. Can I go back? I can't. Oh, well. There's a keychain back there. Not a rare keychain, but just a normal keychain. So, not a big deal that I missed it. But, like, I I stopped playing so many games at deserts. Like, every time I try to play through a new Super Mario game, I tend to stop at around World 2 because I just don't want to play through the desert world. Even, like, Nino Kuni, the second big area is a desert. And, like, Nino Kuni was really fun from what I played. I really loved the story. I loved the world. There's mercs, but like, uh, just the visuals of the desert, just, uh, I couldn't, I want to get back to that game, but I'll have to get through the desert, and maybe it's better than I remember, maybe that's not the reason I stopped playing, I think the main reason I stopped playing was I don't have enough time, but, also Nino Kuni's getting a sequel as well, so, shit, <laughs> Uh, though it's only on the PS4, I believe, and I don't have a PS4. Though, wasn't there, like, a way, like, PS, um, I was about to say PSPC. I don't think it's called PSPC. I don't remember what it's called, but there's, like, a way to pay, play PS4 games on your PC now? Um, I'll, I'd have to look into that, but I, I, I think there was something like that? I don't know. If so, like, I said for a long time that I personally... Since, like, the PS4, Xbox One especially, I don't know, I just don't really get being exclusively a console gamer. I mean, price, I guess, but right now, like, is it really cheaper? Even, like, not even factoring the cost of games, because, you know, PC games are cheaper because they go on sale, like, all the time on Steam. Okay, fine, but let's ignore that. Even then, like, if you want, I guess, the full PS4 experience, You've got to get the PS4 Pro, and say you got a PS4 at launch because you're a big Sony fan. You paid, what, $400 at launch. You paid now another $400 for the Pro, and hell, maybe you even got the Slim. That was what, like $250? Um, 
So, like, consoles are kind of just becoming PCs where every few years you're going to have to pay for an upgrade to them. So, like, I don't know, it's... The market's really weird right now. And I guess the, the advantage to me with PCs has always been, yeah, up front, you pay an astronomical cost compared to a console. Like, what, a console costs 400 okay. And a PC, like, a gaming PC that can trounce it would cost, what, like, 3000 That's That's a lot of months. I understand that. But the thing is, I don't have to pay another 400 well, I have to pay another 400 like, down the line, and of course I save on games. I mainly have to buy a new graphics card, maybe, in, like, however many years, four or five years. And that's basically the same thing as, like, buying a new console. And then, of course, you can do more with your PC. There's always that argument as well. I don't know. I mean, I've long been someone that's just bought the Nintendo console for their games and then had a relatively decent gaming PC. And by long, I mean for like a year, but hey, whatever. Don't don't talk about that. Um, but I don't know. It's just That's just my personal uh, opinion. I... Don't real. I mean, I own a PS3. The thing is, I do want a PS4, but I want a PS4 at like the end of its life, where like all the games are already out and they're cheaper, and I don't have to really worry about getting them because they're all there, and I and like there's a huge library for me to consider. That's when I got a PS3. Like I got a PS3 a little bit uh, less than a year ago, um, and I mainly got it for Okami HD. But like, there's a there's plenty of games on it, like Nido Kuni. Um, Shadow of the Colossus and Ico, which I have, but I haven't played. I played a little bit of Shadow of the Colossus, but not uh, not any of Ico. I really, I, I really want to finish that game. So I played that game a long time ago, and I loved it, but uh, I don't remember it very well. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. It's just, uh, I prefer to get a console like that at the end of its generation, because... Um... There's a plenty of games considered now. And now at that point, why do I get the Nintendo console when it comes out? Shut up. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I don't really have a good answer for you. I guess because I'm a, like a I, nostalgia. Honestly, it's probably nostalgia because I grew up with Nintendo. Um, you know, I had a Game Boy growing up. My first console was an N64, and then I got a GameCube for Christmas one year with Melee, and I loved it. Um, I grew up with a Game Boy Advance, I got a DS Lite when it came out, and I don't know, it, it probably is very much nostalgia, and this is the excitement of, it's a new Nintendo console. Also, the Switch is going to get Xenoblade Chronicles 2, so that's like a mandatory purchase for me, I fucking love Xenoblade, so... Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, the Switch did have Breath of the Wild when it came out. But I also have a Wii U. And overall, the experience is pretty similar. Also, I need fire. Yeah, overall, the differences between Breath of the Wild on the, um... The Switch and the Wii U are pretty... Oh, whoops, I completely screwed this up. Luckily, the fuse comes back. Uh, are pretty minimal. But, I don't know. I guess this is I wanted the true experience. Also, it's like... Here's the thing. I hate that... Like, I have to worry all the time about games getting HD ports. Also, did I screw this up? I did. Fantastic. Because, as someone who does LPs of these games, I always want to do, like, the definitive version of them. So... Every time a game comes out, I'm like, I wonder if it'll get an HD port in the future, and if I should just wait to do it. It's, like, really stressful, because... Especially if it adds content, like, ugh, god damn it. Luckily, Okami HD doesn't add content. It's just, frankly, a better version of the game. Though, I don't know if I ever want to redo Okami, because it's a long game, and I've already technically done it on this channel twice. This, the original one was deleted, because I hated it, and I did a channel reboot in, like, 2013. And then I did Okami again, because, I don't know, I'm an idiot. I've also done Cave Story, like, four different times. I did it, like... I did the Wii version. I think near the time that came out, when I still did shitty camcorder LPs, I did 
Then I did the PC version, the with the original translation, the fan translation. Um, and then I did. Did I do it again after that? I don't remember. I've done it multiple times though. I know that. I can't remember why I've done it multiple times or what, for what versions, but yeah, maybe I did a full playthrough of like Curly Story or some shit. I look. I'm not saying I made the best decisions as an LPer in my younger days, and that's why all of those days are now like vanquished from the internet. I'm just saying I made those decisions. I also LP'd Sonic Genesis for the GBA and like. It's there where I learned I just shouldn't do bad games because I can't come up with unique complaints, frankly. Um, I will just complain about the same thing over and over again. That's the reason I will never ever do an, a Let's Play of Paper Mario, Sticker Star, or Color Splash because I have a lot to say about those games, but not like 40 parts worth to talk about how much I hate those games. So, yeah. Anyway, that was a level. I don't think I talked about it once in this whole video. Uh, it's fun. It's just a secret level. It kind of highlights real of uh, Wild World, all the level gimmicks. Pretty fun. And I always have a cool game, of course. <laughs> I, I, I do like how I just didn't talk about that level the whole time. But, hey, Kirby's just a really fun... Um, I, I hate to call it mindless... Because it's not, especially when you're like trying to remember all these sunstones and keychains you need to get um, for, for an LP like this, but I don't know. Easy is a word <laughs> I could use. Boss butch, oh, butch, butch. But anyway. <laughs> and good old Blocky. Look at him with that derpy ass smile. Those lopsided eyes. Amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, now that we're done with all the Wildwood levels, we can finally go to the boss. And Tyrannus is getting faster and faster. He is not letting up. You think he'd question exactly why we're chasing him though at this point? Uh I've never used spear for this fight. I've never used spear for this fight. I kinda want to. You think he'd question, though, seriously, why why we're chasing him? Because we must have good reason. But then again, why is he even kidnapping DDD? We don't even know that yet. We're just like, well, gotta get him back, I guess. DDD's not even really a villain anymore. He's just, like, sometimes an asshole. And then, otherwise, Kirby and him are friends, I guess. Anyway. Here we have Coily Rattler, a giant snake revered by the people of the sky since the dawn of time. Its body lies sheathed in celestial golden armor, but the old texts say its head lacks protection, as I've been demonstrating here already. Yeah, the head is the weak point, you just want to attack that. Anything else, you'll just uh, have your weapons or attacks plink off of it. Plink's a fun word, by the way! Well, uh, please move so I can get my power back. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, now we get to have a boss fight where I don't have a power. <laughs> uh, though again, shooting stars is... No, well, I'm an idiot. It's a pretty effective strategy. So, it's not really that bad, honestly. Uh, fun fact. Every, like, okay. Um, I was about to say every Kirby game has a true arena. Not every Kirby game does. Everything, that's every... Not every once in Superstar. That's not true at all. Um, every modern Kirby game, I guess. The most recent ones have had true arenas, Jesus Christ. Since Superstar Ultra, I guess. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Some of them have had them, and... Um... The first time I did the true arena in Triple Deluxe, I fought the true final boss without a copy ability, because I lost mine. And I won. <laughs> and that was like my first time trying the true arena, so I, I don't know how I did that. I somehow completed the true arena on my first try, being the true final boss without a copy ability. And that, like, I've never been able to do that since. But I somehow did it then, and I still don't know how. Man.
Anyway, that's the Coily Rattle defeated. Let's get our Sunstone. And the Dream Stock has grown once again, giving us access to endless explosions. Okay. All right. Who names a region of a world endless explosions? That is one, the most ridiculous name I've ever heard, and two, the fucking best. It's metal as hell. I love it. <laughs> anyway. We'll be, we'll be uh, tackling endless explosions next time on Kirby Triple Deluxe, so see you guys then.